And at the moment I'm having a lot of trouble refitting the radiator. The It's a new radiator. I, I don't have the, the original one, so I don't know whether the new one is exactly the same as the old one. But what the problem is, when I mount it on the, the mounting points here, the neck of the radiator sits a good 15 uh, mil higher than the alignment required here and also it's to the left so it's high and to the left now I can bring it across and I've actually widened the, the mounts there to bring it across more so I've got a reasonable way of cross now I actually have to I'd suggest um, probably bend those down to lower the radiator a bit so I'll see if that works but <coughs> now either the new radiator is just not quite the same as the old one or you know, this has been damaged uh, which is quite likely um, and it's been pushed and bent out of alignment so it'll take a bit to get it in but um, with it sitting too high it actually hits the bonnet so I've tried to put the bonnet on and the the bonnet sits on top of the radiator cap so the radiator does have to come down so that's what I'm about to try now now I've had to modify the, the mounting for the radiator and for the bonnet what um, has obviously happened <clears throat> sometime in the history of this tractor it's had a few dings in the front when I got it, it didn't have the bonnet on, so I didn't know actually how it was sitting. Uh, I could see from the damage in the bonnet that it had been hit, but um, also when I've looked at it, the mounting bolts had been changed. They put these big heavy bolts in and welded some captive nuts on the inside. It should have had these mountings, which I, I bought new. So what I've done is that I've <coughs> taken the other, cut the other nuts off, put the right thread on here for the proper um, bolts, bonnet bolts. Because the bonnet was sitting too low, I've actually raised that by probably about eight mil um, from center to center. So it's come up eight mil. So I've, I've done both new bolts, so I can get rid of these big things. The other thing I've done is I've, I've heated this top flange up here, and I've knocked that down probably by about 5 mil. Now the net result of all of that is that now the radiator lines up with the, the gooseneck. Also I had to widen this to shift the radiator across. So it now lines up, and when I mount the bonnet on, there should be clearance between the top of the radiator and the um, and the bonnet. Um, you know, effectively, I've got about another 15 mil, um, so I should have plenty of clearance once I mount the bonnet. So it's taken a bit of fiddling around, but uh, uh, that's just what happens when you're dealing with with unknown. Um, history of uh, things like tractors or cars. A few more things in place. The adjustment of the mountings on the front of the tractor here by raising things up or raising the bonnet up and lowering the radiator down has fixed the, the mounting problem. It still didn't quite go um, perfectly in alignment but it is easier to get the hose on. Um, don't know why it's like that. Maybe it's the radiator slightly different. Who knows? Doesn't matter. It's in. The um, so the radiator is in, all all connected up. There's good clearance at the top. There's at least 10 mil clearance between the cap and the top of the um, bonnet. So that's working well. Bonnet comes down. Um, just fitted the starter motor. Um, Got it connected up yet? Of um, changing the wiring a little bit, I'm putting an extra solenoid in. Um, just had a spare one lying around, so I'm putting one in in conjunction with the uh, the gear lever switch. So.
so I've got to do the wiring yet, so I haven't done that. Um, about to uh, finish off the carburetor, hopefully that's cleaned up, it's been sitting in petrol for over a month, we'll see how that goes. I finished rewiring the tractor, didn't take much. Um, I managed to get a, a wiring diagram. It was a lot easier to rewire it than to use the old wiring. It was pretty old and, and um, all the insulation was quite hard. As I mentioned, I've put a um, starter solenoid on there. Probably no need for that, but I, I have one lying around, so I've put that on as well as the uh, normal starter switch. That seems to work okay. New batteries installed. Um, the wiring, of course, has all been replaced in behind the dash. I've also uh, <coughs> upgraded the gauges. Um, new uh, oil pressure gauge. I've actually installed a water temperature gauge. They've all got lights in them. I put a light switch in. Um, reason being, obviously, to um, turn the lights on for the um, for the gauges but also I put a headlight on that I had lying around um, it's one my father had in his store of parts many many years ago um, there it is there I've mounted that on the front I've put a um, LED light in that so it doesn't consume so much uh, power so uh, you know, put the wiring along, it's probably a little bit untidy but it should be okay. Generator's all uh, wired up, it, um, it's okay. Now I have started the motor. I, I didn't put the, um, haven't put the rocket cover on properly. Uh, reason being is I wanted to run the motor <coughs> uh, a few times and re-tighten the head. Now I've already tightened it up once, it took up a little bit of uh, um, talking so um, you know when you put copper gaskets on it's probably not a bad idea to, to run your motors for a bit, warm them up, let them cool down, to torque them up probably only a couple of times and you can actually uh, find that you can re-torque the head again so um, probably important with the particularly with the copper gaskets, uh, the composite uh, material in between because uh, it will um, avoid any chance of blowing a head gasket later on. Now having started this up I, I, uh, I didn't video that because it's hellishly noisy because it's sitting in the garage but um, I discovered that there was a, uh, a water leak in the block. Now it's uh, it's actually under the starter motor. The um, very slight weep was coming out of a, um, obviously there was a crack in the block, not a large one but enough to to uh, deposit uh, coolant on the floor. Now <coughs> uh, the easiest way to fix that, I, I've used Chemiworld. Now a lot of people don't like using Chemiworld um, you know, they say oh, it clogs up motors and so on. Well, yeah, you know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but it does work very well in in repairing um, cracks or seepage in the block, which it's done. But what you need to do is that you know, once it, once it's sealed up, <coughs> you actually drain the system and you flush it, and you know, make sure you get uh, most of the um, a surplus uh, chemi weld out of the system. I think part of the problem is people put chemi weld in and they just leave it and yes it will eventually gum things up but um, you know, once the the, um, the crack is sealed, which it appears to be now sealed, completely flush the motor and make sure it's completely flush. Flush it a few times and uh, you know it should be fine. Now I do run coolant in these motors, or in all my uh, vintage uh, and older motors. I don't run modern coolants. I, um, 
I use um, classic coolant um, Y. Um, modern coolants can cause problems with um, copper composite gaskets. Now, I have had problems with uh, modern coolants where uh, you'll, you'll put your copper gasket on <coughs> and find later on it will blow. Uh, the coolant seems to go in between the, the copper and uh, blow the gasket out. Now I've had that confirmed by an engine reconditioner years ago. So nowadays I use a classic coolant which um, doesn't have the same effect, particularly on the, on the old copper gaskets. The, um, I haven't um, finished talking the head yet. Uh, that's why I've got the uh, an old mower petrol tank here providing a petrol supply. Once I've uh, talked the head up, I'll put this on and then put the petrol tank on and then um, it's getting very close to being finished. <coughs> I've finished rewiring the tractor. Didn't take much. Um, I managed to get a, a wiring diagram. It was a lot easier to rewire it than to use the old wiring. It was pretty old and, and um, all the insulation was quite hard. As I mentioned, I've put a um, start a solenoid on there. Probably no need for that, but I I have one lying around, so I've put that on as well as the uh, normal starter switch. That seems to work okay. New batteries installed. Um, the wiring, of course, has all been replaced in behind the dash. I've also uh, <coughs> upgraded the gauges. Um, new uh, oil pressure gauge. I've actually installed an water temperature gauge. They've all got lights in them. I put a light switch in. Um, reason being, obviously, to um, turn the lights on for the um, for the gauges, but also I put a headlight on that I had lying around. Um, it's one my father had in his store of parts many, many years ago. Um, there it is there. I've mounted that on the front. I've put a um, LED light in that so it doesn't consume so much uh, power. So, uh, yeah, Put the wiring along, it's probably a little bit untidy, but it should be okay. Generator's all uh, wired up, it, um, it's okay. Now I have started the motor. I, I didn't put the, uh, haven't put the rocker cover on properly. Uh, reason being is I wanted to run the motor <coughs> uh, a few times and re-tighten the head. Now, I've already tightened it up once, it took up a little bit of uh, um, talking. So, um, you know, when you put copper gaskets on, it's probably not a bad idea to, to run your motors for a bit, warm them up, let them cool down, to talk them up, probably only a couple of times, and you can actually uh, find that you can re torque the head again. So, um, probably important with the particularly with the copper gaskets, uh, the composite uh, material in between because uh, it will um, avoid any chance of blowing a head gasket later on. Now having started this up, I, I, uh, I didn't video that because it's hellishly noisy because it's sitting in the garage, but um, I discovered that there was a, uh, a water leak in the block. Now it's uh, it's actually under the starter motor. The um, very slight weep was coming out of a, um, obviously there was a crack in the block, not a large one, but enough to to uh, deposit uh, coolant on the floor. Now, <coughs> uh, the easiest way to fix that, I, I've used Chemi Weld. Now a lot of people don't like using Chemi Weld. Um, you know, that's how I did clogs up motors and so on. Well, yeah, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but it does work very well in, in repairing um, cracks or seepage in the block, which it's done. 
But what you need to do is that you know, once, it, once it's sealed up, <coughs> you actually drain the system and you flush it and you know, make sure you get uh, most of the, um, the surplus uh, chemi world out of the system. I think part of the problem is people put chemi world in and they just leave it and yes it will eventually gum things up but um, you know, once the, the, um, the crack is sealed, which it appears to be now sealed completely flush the motor and make sure it's completely flush, flush it a few times and uh, you know it should be fine. Now I do run coolant in these motors, in mean, all my uh, vintage uh, and older motors. I don't run modern coolants, I, um, I use um, classic coolants. Um, why? Um, modern coolants can cause problems with um, copper composite gaskets. Now I have had problems with uh, modern coolants where uh, you, you'll put your copper gasket on <coughs> and find later on it will blow. Uh, the coolant seems to go in between the, the copper and uh, blow the gasket out. Now I've had that confirmed by an engine reconditioner years ago. So nowadays I use a classic coolant which um, doesn't have the same effect particularly on the, on the old copper gaskets. The, um, I haven't um, finished talking the head yet, uh, that's why I've got the uh, an old mower petrol tank here providing a petrol supply. Once I've uh, talked the head up, I'll put this on and then put the petrol tank on and then um, it's getting very close to being finished. I'll finish re-talking the head. Put the uh, rocket cover back on. A new gasket. That should be um, should be fine. Flush the uh, chemi world out of the radiator. Um, I, I ran uh, the hose through for quite some time to flush it, but um, I've left plain water in it at the moment, and I'll run it again, uh, warm it up, cool it down, and then flush it yet again to make sure it's completely clean tank is now on. Um, put the uh, bonnet stay on the front, new bonnet stay, didn't have one. The um, fuel bowl was completely blocked on the old one so there was no way fuel was ever going to get through it. Couldn't even clean it out so uh, new bowl. The uh, tank has all been sealed up. Put the pipes on. Uh, I'll check that soon to make sure that there's no leaks in that. Um, it's uh, getting very close to being finished. Got a few bolts to uh, tighten up. Um, just on the rear here, I've, I haven't really tightened the uh, mud guards up yet. I'll do that shortly. Um, got some tyres to get. I've got a new front tyre for the other side. I'll put that on. I've got to get two new rear tyres. Haven't done yet that yet. So this stage I'll uh, put the fronts on. I haven't adjusted toe in and and the uh, the rods yet, but I'll do that as soon as I've got the tyre on. And then it's getting very close to being driven out of the garage. So uh, I'll be interested to do that because I've never driven uh, one of these before. So all in all, it's coming along. It's as I say almost complete. It's come a long way in a reasonably short period of time. The, um, yeah, the tractor, as you've seen in the videos, came in pieces. This is the first time I've actually seen it complete, uh, albeit still got to put the tyres on. Um, so hopefully this will uh, work well and I'll be able to drive it out of the garage and put it to use. Right, the Ferguson's finally finished, so I've just started it up. I had to change the uh, muffler setup. It actually didn't have a muffler, it's a straight pipe. Quite deafening, um, not much better now, but I put a hot dog muffler in. 
microphone just because I have one available. Just slid in the top of the um, exhaust pipe, so that's fine. It's quietened it down a little bit. But I'll just move closer. You probably won't hear any commentary, but I'll just show you how it's um, running. The oil pressure's good, the water temperature's good, hydraulics work well. Sounds a bit like a hot rod, but that doesn't matter. buying new tyres. It's a lot easier than trying to salvage the old ones. Uh, it turns out the tyres are um, more expensive than um, what I had to pay for the tractor, but anyway, it's uh, something I'll never have to replace again. New top link, I didn't have one before. Now I've made a, a carry-all in in typical uh, agricultural uh, fashion out of scrap lying around the yard. It seems to work alright. Found the measurements uh, required for the uh, three point linkage on the uh, on the net. Put a little tow bar, that's mainly just to put the uh, little trailer on the back, carry uh, uh, just light loads. There she is, the completed 1952 Ferguson tractor. A lot different from what it was when I picked it up on the trailer, just in pieces. Uh, probably destined, um, I don't know what it was destined for. Certainly uh, not immediate restoration, that's for sure. Didn't take too long. Um, you know, it's now September, end of September, it's finished. So, uh, now about six months. Not too bad. Um, I really had to get out of the way to make room for other things in the garage, other restoration. I'll just sit on and drive. Um, you'll have to put up with the noise. hard to start, we could use a bit of start with acid. Um, that's what's sitting in the toolbox there. But very happy, as you can see the hydraulics, well, they've come up too high. I actually um, touched the lever before I started off. I was 
pleased with the hydraulics, they actually do work. So the work I did on the hydraulic system was certainly worth it. I've got to get used to how to, how to use it. Um, I had my grandson on it before and um, got the trailer hitched up with a bit of load in it and I took the, slid the trailer off and didn't realise that the, um, the weight that the trailer was putting on um, obviously lightened the load on the carry all which then when it turned around the grandson uh, had gradually risen up off the uh, ground but anyway it's uh, completed and this will be the end of uh, the restoration videos.